this is huge. This is absolutely, I don't, even some of the executives can't grasp the advancements that are, that have happened in the cyber truck. This thing is, this, this leaves everything else behind. I have a little bit of a mechanical engineering background. I have a degree. I never did anything too fantastical with it. Um, but that being said, I love to follow all of the work that you do, uh, giving us insights on how the different Tesla models are manufactured. What was the one thing that you were just most blown away with with regards to how they are producing the Cybertruck? Either, I guess, maybe one feature or piece of technology that's in the vehicle and then one manufacturing process or factory tidbit um, that you just thought were out of this world. Uh, okay, so let me give you the factory tidbit. Um, I've never seen anybody turn austenite into martensite. I've said this about a zillion times. You have a, an engineering background, and um, if you had to take metallurgy, you can't do it. And then I watched it. And um, and I took that for four years in high school and two more years in college, and I I, I was totally blown away at that. I, I could not believe my eyes. I can hardly wait to take a sample and shove, uh, huh, shove it under a microscope. <laughs> I was going to... Uh, so anyways, I, I've got to try and behave. Um, uh, Joe told me that anyhow, at the end of the day, um, I'm very, very interested in that process. I saw it. It was right in front of me. I saw them doing the pressing. I saw them basically work hardening that steel, <laughs> but there was no noise. What the hell's with that? There was no noise. The, the, uh, uh, and it came out and I truly believe I truly believe that uh, that this is like game changing. Who who in the world modifies steel um, on the on the on the stamping line? I, I never saw anything like that before in my life. So that's that's my so, thing from the assembly line. Yeah. Do you think is all of the work hardening that's being done on those rolls of HFS is all of that being done right there in that big yeah. Schuler line where they're straightening it and then doing the laser cutting it? Yep. Like it's yeah. not coming in, like the coils are not already pre-work hardened. They're doing all of that work hardening themselves in-house. What I was told was that it's austenitic when it comes in. They, uh, they, they put it through the straightening rolls and slitters and stuff like that. And then it goes into, um, it goes into this work hardening box. It's a, it's fairly large. Um, I don't know what's going on inside, obviously. I just know that, and you can't tell by looking at the product. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you anything, but I can tell you that that's what I was told was that it goes in austenitic and comes out martensitic. Did I'll, they tell you what the thickness of, so I heard they, they said it was 1.4 millimeter. 1 .3. What? Yeah. Was the feedstock thicker than that? I assume like it has to be, if they're doing that work hardening, they have to be compressing nah. it. Some. All you got to do is bend it. Um, I, I, so I know how to make it work with, uh, with stuff like pen deflex and things like that. I mean, I know how to make, that's the stuff you use uh, to, like, if you're on a ship and you want to defend it from a machine gun fire or things like that, then you may use Pendaflex. And when the bullet hits it, it actually makes the material stronger. But I can tell you, uh, 1.8 and 1.3 is what I was told are the two, uh, are the two thicknesses. That's 1.3 1, 1 for the fenders and 1 on 1.8 for the doors. And I can tell you that uh, I can fire by have I go hunting a lot. I used to go hunting a lot. Now I don't do anything. But uh, but at the end of the day, I used to be able to fire through a uh, a pot or a pan and whatnot. Not a big deal. We used to use them for targets. 1.8, 1.3, I should be able to get through that. But I can't do it if it's martensite. Not a chance. The structural boundary, everything looks like this. It, it's got long string Inter interfaces and whatnot. And that's why those 45s and the nine millimeters and everything else, they hit it and just blew up. I mean, you see it in slow motion. And I'm going, that can't happen. What, what's in back of that? There's got to be, you know, there's got to be something in back of it. That's uh, that's not letting it through, but in actuality, I may never occur to me that you could make Martin Siddick steel out of Austin. I, I just, just totally blew me away. Yeah. What about in the car, as far as technology that they unveiled in the cyber truck? The big thing for me was 48 volts. And I, I can't, there isn't one thing because one leads to another, but 48 volts, the ethernet ring and, um, and self and sorry, and uh, steer by wire, they're all kind of connected. To me, that's one lump. 
Um, they probably wanted to go by to steer by wire. Steer by wire uh, at 12 volts is like a nightmare, and that won't work. Um, but uh, but if I if I want to have steer by wire and I can go to 48 volts, then what I can do is say, well, <clears throat> if I got 48 volts, why am I putting in the all the other communication wires and stuff like that? What what reason? What rationale is there for that? Putting the Ethernet ring. They've been talking about this since I was working at Ford in the 80s. But you can't do it because marketing says, oh, we can't sing a single car if we drop to 48 volts. Or purchasing will tell you there's no 48 volt can, uh, uh, components. So that'll make our, uh, our purchasing agents work too hard. So we're not going to do that. Engineers wanted to do it. Marketing, purchasing, finance. That's who runs the companies, not, not engineers. And if you want to get promoted, all you got to do is say no. So to me, um, they probably said, I want steer by wire. And uh, and then somebody said, well, we can make that, <laughs> but it's going to be kind of hard from a communication standpoint. We got to have much, much faster. Either we have direct lines, which is what everybody else has got now, or or we we go with Ethernet. And if we're going to go with Ethernet, we I'd still like to have 48 volts. I want to cut down the amount of um, wiring that I'm going to need. And Ethernet's fast. It's instant. So to me, all three of them are connected. It's one big, it's a strategy. And uh, the little tactical things like the 48 volt, the steer by wire and, the, and Ethernet, th those are, that's all part of the grand uh, grand Did strategy. you see any indication that they are already doing break by wire or is it still hydraulics? Is that something that- Did I say break? I'm sorry. No, you, you I, said steer. So that's yeah. the breaking by wire is the one thing that I haven't really heard anything about yet. Any confirmations <laughs> yeah. either for or against. I heard nothing, but I don't understand it personally at all. I mean, again, <laughs> I land an airplane and it's break by wire. I mean, there's hydraulics involved and whatnot to clamp up and everything, but it's a little teeny, it's a little teeny solenoid that gets moved and bingo. It's, I don't, I really don't understand why we're so far behind in automotive. It used to be that automotive led the parade, but, but I, I guarantee you, if somebody's going to do it, it'll be Tesla. The big thing for me is how come we have to have, why we still got wing mirrors? Why we still got rear view mirrors? What the hell? What are you thinking? Uh, actually, yesterday I, I was out uh, cruising around and, um, and I spotted two cars that had the, um, the, uh, the outside mirrors smashed off on one side or the other and you're going to tell me that's safer than having a camera oh the camera could be damaged i don't see how oh the camera might get dirty tesla's washing the cameras why what, what do you where do you get this stuff from it's all baloney it's it's just legacy crap that needs to disappear we, we've got to start moving ahead with automotive and by the way one of the things that i liked uh, about phil self-driving uh, especially applied to robots, you know, now those robots will be able to see in the back of their head. Not too many people have figured that one out, but I'm telling you what, <laughs> that is a big deal to know yeah. that the robot can see backwards as well as forward. That's a big deal, a really big deal. And by the way, I, I know a lot about robots. When I was 16, I started the trade. I was a tool maker before I was an engineer. <clears throat> and, um, when I started the trade, the very first thing that I worked on was a Unimate, and that was the first robot ever. And you want to talk about something that would scare the piss out of you continuously. Um, those old robots were like nasty. But now with the things that Elon's got, and if what I saw is if what I saw is true, if it really is true, um, okay, so when you have a, the robot that, that Elon has shown, it's got a battery pack you might be able to get, um, you know, um, power to come to the robot through its feet and stuff like that for induction, but it, it would be awkward. You could make things happen a lot faster and easier is if you just had it tethered. So it's got a certain amount of area that it can walk around in and it's got a cable coming down to the robot. Now I got power. I got communication with the rest of the assembly line. I don't have to have a lot of extra communication that could cause, um, I don't know, 
a little bit of a problem here and there with uh, with signal interference. There's a lot of good things that are happening if what I saw was correct. And I loved the latex fingers. That's another thing. The Utah hand and all these other things, they can do, you know, they can juggle an egg and whatnot. But if I've got if I've got latex fingers, I've got that's about as close to human fingers as I can get. And that'll that's gonna be wizard. The the one thing that was really amazing was putting a nut and bolt together with two pieces of steel. Holy shit, I was blown away. That's really hard to do. Really hard. Really hard. So, and the uh, robot had no problem at all. Uh, what's crazy, I guess my question is, so, you know, you've torn down um, pretty much every uh, type, type of Tesla and multiple ones, right? My question is, when you saw the Cybertruck, um, and you compare the Cybertruck versus the other Tesla vehicles. Um, how big of step forwards from a manufacturing and even technology standpoint was the, you know, even the Model 3, Model Y, let's say, is being the most advanced to the Cybertruck? Like, how many did this like beat your expectations by, you know, how much more engineering they're doing now? Uh, was it not as big of a leap as you expected? Or uh, what were your assumptions on that? This is total blow away. This is so radically different and so advanced um, from a material science standpoint, from electronics, from electrics, uh, just from advancements that everybody's known about but didn't have the balls to do. This is the biggest leap that I've seen so far in anything, anything. I don't, I don't care what you're talking about. There's nothing in automotive that's taken this many leaps at once. There's there's rules about, you know, if you're gonna design a new car, use an existing engine and transmission. If you're gonna, or or the other way around, gonna have a new engine, put it in a, put it in an existing car first. That, that's, that's a big deal. This one, <laughs> new steels, new, uh, new manufacturing methods, new uh, 48 volt systems, uh, steer by wire, <laughs> good God. This puts everything else to shame. This is like, this is like what happened a long time ago in the U.S. Like at the turn of the 1900s, everything, everything, every day there was a new exciting thing that happened. They were they were inventing left, right, and center, but that was with entrepreneurs, not not a bunch of financial or marketing kind of people. This 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 is huge. This is absolutely. I don't even some of the executives can't grasp. Uh, the 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 advancements that have that have happened in the Cybertruck. This thing is, this this leaves everything else behind. 